Good morning, YouTubers. Thanks for joining me this morning to take another look at um, more of my collectible children's books. Um, I'm making a short series of these to highlight some very dear books that I've collected over many, many, many years. So my hope is that for those of you who remember these books, that it will be fun to see them again. And for those of you who have <clears throat> never seen the books, that this will be a treat for you. Um, my voice is a little scratchy. I've just woken up. It's a little bit early on Saturday morning, and you can see I've got my coffee, which <clears throat> I might sip now and again. So this morning... I've picked out I picked out a couple a couple three books I couldn't really decide which one might be the best to take a look at um, and the choices are a book of uh, children's rhymes and this one is the smallest or we also have um, as you can see, Jack and the Beanstalk, or here we go around the mulberry bush, which was kind of a, a little song we used to sing. I don't know, do kids sing that anymore? Anyway, that one's a really cute one. Or Three Little Kittens. Um, I'm thinking maybe that uh, because maybe most people are more familiar with Three Little Kittens, let's start with that one. We'll do that one this time. Let me square away some space here. And while I've got a second, excuse me. I think we've got a little bit of room here. Uh, I was going to move a few other things, but um, I'll leave them in place. Um, you probably saw that I have uh, a coloring book. You might know people that are beginning to uh, color. Um, usually something that you only think about for kids, maybe uh, in kindergarten or first grade. But I found that coloring has been really, really comforting and therapeutic, helps me relax, and I've really enjoyed it. Um, I've also really liked adding to my yet another collection. I'll show it to you before we start the book. This is a box that was my mother's, and... She graduated high school, it would have been 1950, and back in 1950, at least the little town that she was in, uh, in Alabama, uh, the furniture company in the little town would gift these to each of the uh, female graduates. And the thought was at that time that this would become a hope chest. If you've heard that term, hope chest, that's what this refers to. Now, truly, the furniture company makes full-size hope chests. And if you had a full-size chest, it would be about as big as, say, the, the foot of your bed and two or three feet uh, wide and a couple feet deep. And the point of the hope chest would be to gather things that you would use when you married. Dishes, linens, um, uh, silverware, maybe uh, little china pieces that you had inherited from family, all manner of things. So that's something that Certainly wouldn't happen today, I guess. Uh, back then, there really wasn't uh, a thought for most women of ever going to college or honestly ever doing anything much past um, 
graduating high school and getting married and having babies. But these days, for me, it's perfect for my coloring pencils. And it's really kind of fragile, so I try to be careful with it. I could probably try to fix that. Anyway, this one was made by a company called Lane, and Lane is a really famous um, uh, furniture manufacturer that you may have heard of. But this particular furniture company was in Anniston, Alabama. And I use this when I pick through all my dozens and dozens of colors. So maybe, maybe one of my next videos I'll take a look and show you some of the coloring pages that I've done. But back to the point of this video, which was to take a look at the three little kittens and have another sip of coffee. Okay, and this light might actually really help us this time. If anyone has seen uh, my other videos, you know that some of my books have this really cool cover, and uh, it's it's hard to it's hard to imagine it without really seeing it or feeling it. It's uh, it, it's kind of scratchy. I don't know if you could hear that. It feels like a really thick um, plastic, kind of. And it's stacked. Um, they are stacked images. And what the end effect is that it looks 3D. And it changes <clears throat> the look as you move the book. And I'm really sorry if it doesn't really show up that well. Let me get closer. I, I don't know. I'll give it a shot. Anyhow, hopefully, hopefully that gives you a little idea. But this was one of the things that fascinated me with this whole book series. This and the fact that they had puppets, which I love puppets. And this book was published by Crossit and Dunlap in New York which I thought was very fancy, being from a small southern town to have a book from New York was a big deal. And this book was made in 1968. So we'll read through and then we'll take a look at the, the pictures a little closer too. Let me make sure that I'm giving you a good, a good view of the book. Is that good? I think that's good. Three little kittens lost their mittens, and they began to cry. Oh, mother dear, we sadly fear that we've lost our mittens. And here's one cat looking in a, a shiffer robe. Is that a new term, too? Uh, old homes that didn't have closets like we know of. They would have pieces of furniture to serve as their closet, and it was called a chiffre robe. I think that's French. So she's looking in her chiffre robe. And this little cat's being very industrious, looking on the highest shelves. And I think it's kind of funny that a cat would have a toy cat. <laughs> Maybe it's like us having a doll. And then the third cat is going through, oh, maybe a junk drawer. I don't know. Anyway, they seem to be trying very hard. What? Lost your mittens, you naughty kittens. Then you shall have no pie. Meow, meow, meow. No, you shall have no pie. Oh, no. Well, there's their mother. There's the pie. And there's really sad kittens with the premise of having no pie. And 
If you look closer again, you'll see every page of this. It's not just not just a picture, and it's not just cartoons. It's actual puppets, and they're made, and their clothes are handmade, and they're posed, and each little piece of their furniture is real, and it's just amazing that all of this effort to go toward making just a children's book. The three little kittens, they found their mittens, and they began to cry, Oh, mother dear, see here, see here. First, we have found our mittens. Put on your mittens, you silly kittens, and you shall have some pie. Purr, purr, purr. Oh, let us have some pie. Which makes me really happy for the kittens, but... I think it would be harder to eat pie if you were a kitten and had paws and then you also had to put mittens on the paws. I don't know, maybe I'm taking this a little too seriously. So here's Mother Kitten and here's her knitting bowl with all her uh, knitting balls and I imagine that they would chase those incessantly. I don't have a cat but I think that's what they do. It's what I've that's what I've heard owners complain about quite a bit. So I think they're showing tremendous restraint. And sure enough, the three little kittens put on their mittens and soon ate up the pie. And those mittens did not stop them one little bit. Look at that. Need his whistle. Down, down went the pie. Uh oh, maybe not so fast. Oh, mother dear, we greatly fear that we've soiled our mittens. What? Soiled your mittens, you naughty kittens. Then they began to sigh. Meow, meow, meow. Then they began to sigh. They just can't win. First they lost them, then they found them, then they got their reward for pie, and now they're in trouble because they got pie on the mittens. But the three little kittens washed the mittens and hung them out to dry. Oh, mother dear, do you not hear? We've washed our mittens. What? Washed your mittens? Then you're good kittens. But I smell a rat close by. Meow, meow, meow. We smell a rat close by. And that was the end of the book. Well, that was kind of a cliffhanger. <laughs> On the back of the book, you can see how many of these books they made. I have several, but I don't have all of these. Uh, maybe that's something to shoot for. Anyhow, yes, it talks about all the illustration and the puppets and all their lifelike poses. Anyhow, I don't know how long they made these. I, I think maybe through the 70s. And then I uh, didn't see much of them after that. So that's my review. Uh, of the three little kittens and who knows maybe sometime if you're in a thrift store and you happen to see a little tiny book like this from the side you almost might pass it by but it's quite a little treat if you ever do find one thanks for visiting with me 
and I'm looking forward to sharing my next book with you next time. Thanks.